Welcome to A Line Through Time, where I take the time to look through your favourite franchises and work out how it all lines up. I find the point of origin of characters in crossovers truly fascinating. Some crossovers are highly specific in when the characters are from, while others only provide context clues that help the audience work it out. Fire Emblem Heroes falls into the latter category. So I'm going to be looking at the design, weapon, bio, quotes, a day in the life comics, meet some of the hero segments, and even obscure official YouTube videos to piece together which route the Three Houses and Three Hopes characters are from, which point in those routes they've reached, and what their bioleth is like, if at all possible. Sharena's comments will be given lower priority since they're outside of the game itself, and because it's her understanding of the character, not necessarily the objective reality, so there are some contradictions that arise on occasion. Most notably when describing character relationships and using the generic versions, even if Claude is clearly not attending the academy anymore, Sharena, he's already won the war! On a related note, a number of characters will have Byleth listed as their professor. We only see Byleth teaching students who are in their class, and Judith states in Silver Snow that Byleth never taught Claude. But many interactions in Three Houses, like when lines and supports don't change even when one of the characters isn't in the player's roster, suggest Byleth does teach students from other classes. I'm inclined to believe Judith and what I see myself, so we can generally assume that these are from worlds where they are in Byleth's class, as long as nothing in Heroes itself contradicts that. If they don't acknowledge which house they're in, we can generally assume they're from their home house's route. Some versions might be the same version, as Renewed Spirit suggests that the Alphonse, Sharena, and Anna there are the main versions in new outfits. But we're going to assume each version here is an independent character since even the ones most likely to be the same can have noteworthy differences. Characters often speak to other characters from their game as if they're the same versions, usually only acknowledging them as different with, say, pre and post time skip. But Ingrid's Forging Bond story proves that they are separate versions. So we can't assume they match even with the same theme like school or summer, even if those mostly line up. We'll be discussing characters in the order they were added since some come in batches that are from the same world. So, finally, let's begin with the first hero summoned from Fodlan. Byleth tested Professor wields the sword of the creator, meaning he's cleared chapter 4, but the her and eye change from chapter 10 has yet to occur. It's worth noting that one of his status page lines mentions that his mother died shortly after his birth, as Geralt claims in chapter 9. It's hard to say if Byleth already knew this by then or not, but you'd assume so given he's in his 20s. So this could indicate that he's from chapter 9 or 10, but I'm not confident enough to say it's definitive. Proven Professor appears in the Forging Bonds event, Joining Forces, which depicts her arrival in Asker with Edelgard the Future, Dimitri the Protector, and Claude the Schemer. So those three are from the same world during the Academy phase when the three are on amicable terms. Byleth's weapon and her indicate the same time frame as Tested Professor. Her lack of confidence as a professor and her comment about being unsure if she's ever had a friend in her interactions with Sharena suggests to me that she's still fairly new to being a teacher, being closer to chapter 5 than 10. The three students reinforce the time frame with Edelgard referring to her father as the Emperor and herself as a princess, telling us that she is yet to ask her father to abdicate in chapter 11. The 16th Grand Conquest map was themed around the Battle of the Eagle and Lion, Dimitri saying this battle is set to begin at long last. Yes, this line is repurposed from Three Houses, but it could be something more. In Three Houses, the battle takes place in Chapter 7, suggesting to me that the three arranged this version of the battle in Asker after the one they were supposed to have got derailed by their summoning, setting these four between Chapter 5 and the end of Chapter 7. Which house Byleth teaches, and thus which route the four are from, remains unclear. The closest to a hint I could find is one of Edelgard's status page quotes mentioning a painting of hers as a nod to an event in the Crimson Flower route where she paints Byleth. So this could hint that she was doing this long before then, or it could be a painting of the summoner, there's nothing conclusive. In the Abyssal Light event, Dimitri alludes to having met Yori in Abyss, Yori confirming that Edelgard and Claude were also there, which occurs in the Cindered Shadows route. It's unclear when exactly that DLC would occur, but it's sometime after Byleth obtains the Sword of the Creator, so it does line up. But then, Dimitri claims that Byleth explained Abyss to him after they left Abyss, even though Dimitri was right there when Elfric explained it to Byleth? Am I missing something? Either way, these four potentially come from Cindered Shadows. I'll come back to this once the Ashen Wolves are introduced. But the way Claude describes Byleth, to me, suggests a familiarity with his antics, which really only occurs in the Golden Deer route. So, Cindered Shadows branching off from Golden Deer, maybe? And to close this set, the Heh, I See You've Noticed comic has the summoner called Future Student Versions This Byleth Student, so it seems that those are meant to be from the same world as this batch. Not all themes work like this, but it does seem to be how it's approached here. Sothis, Girl on the Throne, indicates that she is aware of her status as the Progenitor God given her lack of reaction when Sublime Light Byleth mentions it to her in Weaver Fate, indicating that Rhea's mention of it in Chapter 8 has occurred. And when Byleth mentions their merging from Chapter 10, Sothis's reaction reads more like she's learning this information rather than being reminded of it. 
She also appears alongside Proven Professor in a few Day in the Life comics, suggesting those two are from the same world. It's also implied that the Byleth Smash trailer is one of her dreams. Kronia Gleaming Blade and Solon Church Shadow are both killed in Chapter 10. Solon mentions the experiments in Ramaya Village in a castle quote, which took place in Chapter 8. Interestingly, one of his status page quotes is randomly his dying words from Three Houses. This could imply that he was pulled from his death, but it's not definitive enough to say for sure. Kronya's Meet the Heroes page has Shirena mention her infiltrating the Academy in disguise, which concludes at the end of Chapter 9. It's not clear if the shape-shifting Agarthans can change back and forth at will, or if they have to maintain their false identity continuously, which would help us nail down Kronya's time frame, since it would mean she's pulled from the main mission in Chapter 10, where she drops the disguise. This lines up with her Grand Hero battle being based on that exact stage. Since we only see her in disguise until that point, even among people who know who she is, I'm going to assume she had to maintain it. In conclusion, Solon is from Chapter 9 or 10, and Kronia is from the battle that closes Chapter 10. The next Forging Bonds event was Changing Winds, featuring Hubert, Sinister Servant, Mercedes, Kindly Devotee, Hilda, Idle Maiden, and Petra, Princess of Bridget. They're met in Fodlan by the Heroes cast, so the four are definitely from the same timeline. In A New Future, when post-war versions of the House Leaders arrive, Hubert, Mercedes, and Hilda speak with the Academy versions about their future selves, which seems to suggest they're from the same world, and these four are the students the Summoner refers to as Proven Professor students in that comic I mentioned earlier, so it does seem that these four are from the same world, as the first four. Hilda comes equipped with Frykugel, which is obtained by clearing the Dividing the World Paralogue, which becomes available in Chapter 10 for Golden Deer and Blue Lions, or 12 for Silver Snow. In Changing Winds, Hilda refers to Byleth as the Professor. That kind of language fits a member of Byleth's class, but I think Heroes just does that, despite otherwise using Byleth's name. But it could go with Claude's description of Byleth to further suggest she teaches Golden Deer. Death Knight the Reaper, according to Shirena, wanders the land at night looking for a worthy challenger, which is a nod to the rumours of the Death Knight that arise in Chapter 6. And while this could just be him doing this in Asuka, it may well suggest his time frame of origin, depending on whether he and the other Academy era cast are from the same timeline, since Flane will be added later and she's kidnapped throughout Chapter 6. His grand hero battle is based on where he keeps Flane in Chapter 6, so I'm inclined to say he's Chapter 6 regardless. Sothis Silver Spectre refers to herself as a god in For a Smile, but she says in the level 40 conversation that she was alone on her throne until she was summoned, as if she hasn't met Byleth yet. My best guess is that she's from before the game, back when she still remembered she was a goddess, before she forgot and then met Byleth. 2020's first editions were in Harmony Amid Chaos, an event for Ferdinand, Noblest of Nobles, Lysithia, Child Prodigy, Bernadetta, Eternal Loner, and Annette, Overachiever. It's not clear if these four are summoned together from one world, but they share the theme of Academy Phase variants, so they probably are. Ferdinand is said to be son of the Prime Minister, indicating that Ludwig hasn't been ousted from that position by Edelgard in Chapter 11 yet. And as a rule, all batches of students can be assumed to come from before the war starts at the end of Chapter 11, based on the lack of hostility between the houses. Annette and Lysithia both call tested Professor Byleth Professor in the Path's End. Whether they use that term for all Byleths or just their own is unclear. If just their own, then these four are not from the same world as the House Leaders. And Annette wields Crusher, which has no bearing on her placement since Academy Annette cannot obtain this weapon. Some might say this should exclude other heroes' relics then, but I don't care. Flame Emperor Bringer of War has yet to enact her rebellion against the Church in Chapter 11, since this disguise falls out of use after her identity is revealed. She's either from the Academy phase or even before the game, since we know the disguise was in use before Byleth met the House Leaders. Edelgard Flame Emperor, yeah, good job masking the spoilers by hiding the voice actor, guys, claims to be the uniting emperor of all Fodlan when summoned, telling us that she's from after the Crimson Flower Roots concludes. Additionally, she mentions still having to deal with those who slither in the dark on the home screen, meaning she's from not long after defeating Rhea. And finally, her trailer showcases her pair up ability with male Byleth, potentially indicating that hers is male. Overseas Memories introduces Byleth, Felstar's duo, Dorothea, Solar Songstress, Sylvain, Hanging with Tens, Ingrid, Solstice Knight, and Lauren's Highborn Heat. The group's dialogue suggests to me that they're here as a group from the same world, which is very useful for placing them all. Granted, Dorothea is shown assisting a male Byleth in the group's trailer, but I find the dialogue more suggestive of her origin. And on a related note, the skill she uses on Byleth is Dance, an ability exclusive to the Dancer class, which is obtained by the winner of the White Heron Cup in Chapter 9. And, between titles and designs, they're all evidently from the Academy phase before Byleth and Solthus merge at the end of Chapter 10. Dorothea and Ingrid appear in each other's associated characters sections, mentioning Dorothea taking an interest in and looking out for Ingrid, which suggests to me that the rumoured nuptials paralogue, where Dorothea does both of those, has taken place for them. 
Byleth being so close with Rhea could hint at Byleth leaning towards the church route. And remember, that route spins off from Black Eagles, where you have Dorothea as an easy candidate for the cup, so... Sylvain confirms in the story that the Dimitri isn't here yet. Put a pin in that for now. And Sylvain and Lawrence competing over hitting on girls is a callback to their supports, so they've at least reached rank C. A new future introduces Edelgard, Adrestian Emperor, Dimitri, King of Fargus, Claude Almyra's King, and Lysithia, Ernest Seeker. Strangely, Claude and Edelgard have individual lines that suggest their wars are still ongoing, but in the story and the Force bios, it's confirmed that their wars are over, making one wonder why they're still in their war armors. Edelgard might not have dealt with the Slitherers yet, but Claude is confirmed to have gone back to Almira. Edelgard mentions having her teacher by her side on the home screen, but they all seem to be Academy phase, so I might just be reading too much into things. Another home quote has her mention Claude in the present tense, suggesting that she let him live in this version of events. Lysithia is trained as a Gremory and is from the same Fodlin as Claude. Based on her and Claude's status as a Leicester Noble and the King of Almira respectively, and her still having her shortened lifespan, it seems Lysithia either has yet to relinquish House Ordelia's power or extend her lifespan, or she married Lawrence, which is the only epilogue where she remains a noble in Leicester and isn't said to extend her lifespan. Why has her name not changed then? You really think this proud to a fault girl would change her name just because of Lauren's? Nah. I know she's still trying to make things better for her parents according to her level 40 convo, but let me have this. In her service, introduces Seteth, Seros Adherent, Flane, Playing Innocent, Catherine, Thunder Knight, and Shamir, Archer Apart. Seteth's bio says he serves as Rhea's right hand, and he mentions having work when he gets back to the monastery in his level 40 conversation, suggesting he's from before the disappearance of Rhea at the outset of the war. Him having no idea about Rhea's attempts to resurrect Sothis, according to Beyond Control, suggests to me that he hasn't learned Rhea did something to Byleth as he does in Chapter 11, but I could just be misinterpreting that. Shamir being part of the Knights of Seros does line up with this time frame, though. But we can confirm that his Rhea hasn't transformed into the Immaculate One since the War of Heroes, as he says as much in Beyond Control, so they've not reached the end of either Chapter 11 of Crimson Flower, or Chapter 12 of The Other Roots. Flame's Meet the Hero section mentions the abduction by the Death Knight from Chapter 7, and her subsequently joining Byleth's class, so they've gotten past that at least. Additionally, Seteth and Flame's weapons are the ones obtained by clearing the An Ocean View paralogue, which only becomes available in Chapter 9. Byleth is described as having accompanied Shamir and Catherine each on a number of missions, which disqualifies Black Eagles, where Byleth can only go on two missions total with Catherine since she isn't recruitable. Shamir also displays open hostility towards bugs in a castle quote, so her B support with Leone, where she mentions having gotten over, it hasn't happened yet. Nemesis, King of Liberation, between his lines and his eyes, is clearly from his resurrection in the final chapter of Verdant Wind. Or maybe slightly before that, it's hard to tell. Dimitri Saviour King's bio states that he overthrew the Empire and united all of Fodlan, so he is from post-Azure Moon. His trailer shows off his power-up ability with a female Byleth. Festival Miracle introduces Bernadetta, Frosty Shutin, Felix Icy Giftgiver, and Hilda Holiday Layabout, who are from the Academy phase based on their hairstyles. 2021's Dark Desert Rituals brings Dorothea Twilight Harmony and Raphael Musclemonger. Dorothea is exactly the same as her Beach incarnation, and Raphael is also Academy Phase. Cero's Saint of Legend is, of course, Rhea's original incarnation. From her hair being blonde rather than green, we can tell this is her from the War of Heroes era and not Crimson Flower. Claude, King of Unification, is a Verdant Wind post-war version. He has a castle quote where he says he'll leave Fodlan to Byleth, future tense, suggesting he was making preparations to leave soon after the defeat of Nemesis when he was summoned. His trailer showcases his power-up ability with a male Byleth. Seeds of Fodlan sees the introduction of Ingrid, Galatea's heir, Linhart, Hevering's heir, Dudu, Dimitri's vassal, and Marianne, adopted daughter. The four have the standard house leader and Byleth listings, Ingrid has access to Lewin, which is obtained by completing the Rumoured Nuptials Paralogue, which becomes available in Chapter 7. Linhart and Marianne refer to their sea support in the story, so they're at least that close. Interestingly, Flane is listed in Linhart's associated characters, suggesting their support started up before he was summoned. Forces of Will features Edelgard Hegemon Husk and Dimitri Savage Boar. Edelgard only takes on this form in Chapter 22 of Azure Moon. This makes her the only Edelgard explicitly not from Crimson Flower. Dimitri is from the same roots, but earlier on, during his grim and dark phase between chapters 13 and 17. Is that, or during the time skip, since Byleth is not mentioned in his associated characters? I'm confident it's the events we see in the route where he's the main character, not the other two routes where he turns out like this but gets no screen time and dies off screen. In Grand Conquest 29, Dimitri, Edelgard, and Claude's introductory lines are tweaked versions of their lines from the cutscene in Blood of the Eagle and Lion, possibly suggesting a more specific time frame for him.
Summer Vibrant introduced Caspar Summer Intensity, Ash Fabled Sea Knight, Mercedes Unfussed Basker, Hilda Diz Two Piece, and Leone Relentless Race. As usual, Academy Phase, Byleth is supposedly their teacher, and all but Caspar are confirmed to be in their home classes, but he probably still is. Leone's use of sunflowers in her weapon is likely a callback to her B support with Sylvain. In Angling to Win, Ash references a cat in the pantry, a callback to his and Caspar's B support. Even though it's only available after the time skip, Leone says they're all friends from the same academy, which could either mean they're from the same world or alternate versions of the same academy. If I were to accept that Byleth teaches other students that we don't see and that Judith is just wrong, that would also make these findings a lot less interesting, so I'm going to ignore it. Byleth, the Foldland Star and the Foldland Light are utilising the Enlightened One class, which becomes available after merging with Sothis at the end of Chapter 10. Their bios describe them as a former professor who is in the campaign to end the war, so they're from the war phase. Foldland Star comments, I may never get answers to many of the questions I have about my life in a castle quote telling us that he's not from the end of Silver Snow or Verdant Wind. His grand hero battle is based on the Garag Mac battle map, which features in chapter 15 of Crimson Flower or chapter 14 of The Other Roots. Hers, meanwhile, is based on the Sealed Forest map. This map is, to my recollection, only used in part 2 for the Darkness Beneath the Earth and the The Face Beneath paralogues, which are available from chapter 15 onwards in Crimson Flower and the other three routes respectively. Keepers of Faith introduces Marianne, Serene Adherent, and Gatekeeper, Nothing to Report. Marianne is dressed similarly to the dancer outfit. The differences are acknowledged by Lynn Hart in Keepers of Faith, which also acknowledges her as being from the war phase, and that the attire is from the time of the hero Maurice, with Marianne's demeanour and words implying that the Forgotten Hero paralogue has taken place, meaning she's from Chapter 15 or later. But despite the comments about her attire, she does have the Requiem Dance ability, which suggests that she is still trained as a dancer. As such, I believe this Marianne won the White Heron Cup for Golden Day, then customised her outfit during the war to honour her ancestor after meeting him. Good for her, I knew she could do it. As for Gatekeeper, he says in a castle quote, It was my job to make sure no one suspicious got inside Garrick Mark. No villain will ever get past me. This confidence in his abilities suggests to me that, as far as anyone knows, no villain has infiltrated the monastery yet in his world, so he's from no later than the end of chapter 4 when a group of villains does get inside. But I may be reading too much into it. Meet the Hero shows him speaking with male and female Byleth to avoid giving a specific answer. Abyssal Light brings the Ashen Wolves, Yuri Ashen Valiant, Balthus King of Grappling, Constance Fallen Noble, and Happy Drawn Out Sai to ask her together. It's clear that the four are still part of the Ashen Wolves and have neither left the monastery at the end of Cindered Shadows, nor jumped ship to Byleth's house. One of Balthus's castle quotes has him reference Byleth as the Professor, meaning they've at least met by now. Elfric, Custodian Monk, is stated to have arrived with the four in Yuri's part of the event, meaning he lines up with them. He has a few lines that allude to the idea of resurrecting someone and that he has some goal he's working towards. Given that he only cameos once in the main routes and there's no indication that he attempts to revive Citra there, we can assume he's from Cindered Shadows but before he transforms in the final chapter. And in one of his castle quotes he says, To the Ashen Wolves, I am a mere guardian. This suggests that he hasn't betrayed them yet, setting this any time before the end of chapter 5. His grand hero battle is based on chapter 6, but dialogue takes priority. Happy and Constance's bound hero battle takes place in a map reminiscent of chapter 3's. But Dimitri's comments about pulling out of Abyss suggest that he's at least reached chapter 5, which opens with the group temporarily returning to the surface. So it does seem that the two groups are not from the same world, but are both from Cindered Shadows. Byleth's group is from chapter 5 onwards, while the Ashen Wolves are from chapter 3. Shared Bounty introduces Sothis Bound Spirit Duo and Rhea Witch of Creation. Sothis and Byleth, being together, obviously come from before their merging in chapter 10. They acknowledge her as the progenitor god a few times, so they've reached chapter 8. Rhea's costume is acknowledged in Sothis's associated characters, meaning these three came from the same world. Shamir Lone Moon Ninja is described as a knight of Seros who lived as a mercenary in her past, indicating that she is in the academy phase between chapters 2 and 12, from the Silver Snow route where she is a mandatory part of the church forces, or from Crimson Flower where you fight her if she's not recruited. Her associated characters section states that Byleth went on a number of missions with Shamir, with no mention of them being enemies, which could rule out Crimson Flower. The Lone Moon is a month in the Fodland calendar, during which Chapter 16 occurs, which seems to rule out the Academy phase. My final conclusion is that she's from Silver Snow, Chapter 16, The Rose-Coloured River. Winter Dreamland introduces Ignat, Snowscape Artist, Lysithia, Gifted Students, and Manuela, Silver Caroler. Manuela is described as teaching currently, so she's from the Academy phase since she gives that up during the war. The other two are obviously Academy phase 2, and they're both allegedly Byleth students. Both are Golden Deer, so it's possible, unless they're from the same world as the other Christmas cast. 
2022 got off to a good start with Rhea Immaculate One, based on her suddenly going mad in the final chapter of Silver Snow. Next came Summer Vacation with Edelgard's Sun Empresses, Dimitri Sky Blue Lion, and Claude Tropical Trouble. Meet the heroes list Byleth as both Claude and Dimitri's professor, suggesting they're from their respective roots. Edelgard, as a duo unit, doesn't have room for that to be specified, but she does have the birthday gift Byleth receives from her, just as the two boys do, suggesting she's like them. She also mentions them having to go their separate ways one day, which potentially supports them being from separate worlds. The use of the female equivalent of Emperor, Altina referring to Edelgard's Ur of a Stern Emperor in the beachside map, and mention of the burden of government in their level 40 conversation, all suggest that this Edelgard has ascended the throne by now, marking her as from chapter 11 or 12, since she lacks the tension with Dimitri and Claude that their future selves have in a new future. And maybe it's just me, but her willingness to just relax brings to mind her discussion of the subject in her B support with Byleth, which only becomes available in chapter 12 of Crimson Flower, possibly suggesting she's from chapter 12. Interestingly, the fact that Edelgard can't swim, as revealed in her C support with Bernadetta, comes up a lot, and in the level 40 conversation, she mentions being more comfortable with the ocean, so she may have at least gotten that close to Bernie before now, if we assume she'll remember Asker upon her return. Ingrid and Sylvain's dialogue with this Dimitri could be seen as suggesting they're from the same world, but it could just be them being happy to see any Dimitri here relaxing. Edelgard, meanwhile, cannot be from the same world as Summer Byleth, since Byleth has merged with Sothis by the time of the coronation, and Summer Byleth has not. Weirdly, despite clearly being the Academy version like the other two, Claude's bio calls him the leader of the Leicester Alliance, and I have no idea why when he's also described as head of the Golden Deer and he doesn't lead the Alliance until his grandfather dies during the war. And he also acknowledges Edelgard as the Emperor and not the Princess at the end of Summer Vacation. My best guess is that this is suggesting Duke Regan died very early in the war, and Claude is from a little later than the other two. Byleth Sublime Light is stated to be a former professor in her bio, indicating that she is from at least the war phase, which she confirms in Weave of Fate. She says, I am no chatterbox, as a battle start line. This specific term is Happy's ironic nickname for Byleth, suggesting that this Byleth is either from after the Cindered Shadows campaign, or has at least met Happy and gotten close enough to her to earn that nickname in a main route. Numerous lines of Geralt's Bladebreaker have him claim to be a mercenary and a former Knight of Seros. He also has a status page quote that indicates he's trying to avoid Rhea. His Grand Hero battle uses the first map in Three Houses for its aesthetic. All of this indicates, in spite of Shirena's claims of his return, that he's from the prologue before heading to the monastery. Also, in the A Day in the Life comic, The Chosen Legends, Geralt recognises Sublime Light Byleth as his Byleth, indicating that he has a daughter, but probably not suggesting that these two specifically are from the same world since she's from five years after Geralt died, and there's no evidence, to my knowledge, that people can come from the same world but different points in time. Even Shadow Dragon and Awakening are presented as different worlds in this game. I've already discussed Shez Rising Mercenary, Shez Keen Mercenary, Hilda Helping Hand, Monica Favoured Vassal, and Hulk's Hero of Leicester in the Three Hopes video, so I'll not repeat myself. However, I would like to expand on some of them a little bit. I concluded that Rising Shez was an Empire supporter, but I had nothing to go off for the time frame. Well, having the FEH wiki backing me this time, I now know that Shez says his former Merc band was wiped out recently, and I don't think two years is particularly recent. Unlike Byleth and Three Houses, Shez doesn't miss the time skip and presumably fights in those two years, so I believe this Shez is from during that time span. All Keen Shez has is that Arvel is still around and she's been fighting for Dimitri against the Empire long enough to get upset that her counterpart is fighting for the Empire. Monica was going to ask Rising Shez for a favour like how Hilda asked for Keen Shez. This suggests that Monica's Shez is male, which lines up, and Hilda's is female, but not the same one. She also mentions Hubert looking into Shez's powers, but I cannot find where he mentions his findings that she mentions here. Check for a pinned comment to see if I've got the answer yet. As for Hilda and Holst, I concluded that they're likely from the same world, which is most likely Golden Wildfire, but it could also be Azure Gleam. I'm willing to narrow it down to Golden Wildfire now, since Holst only appears properly there. He only cameos in Scarlet Blaze and never appears in Azure Gleam. It would be like having Savage Board Dimitri be from Verdant Wind at that point. Arvel Cycle Keeper, according to Sharena, doesn't have their memories, suggesting they haven't reached Chapter 15 of any of the recruit Byleth routes. But when summoned, they almost say their name but choose not to. A number of castle quotes hint that they remember their backstory and connection to Epimenides. The reinforcement map is based on Chapter 15, and they claim to have perished twice, which, to me, refers to their defeat by Seros' forces, and then by Shez in Chapter 15. It's difficult to say why Arvel would be in this form if they had returned to being part of Epimenides, but I suppose it's possible it relates to their recent 
surface thing as they die by Shez's hand. But I get the impression that Arvel just lied about being amnesiac and has rediscovered their true form. Nothing else is said about them, be it which Shez they're partnered with or what faction said Shez joined. Holiday Handoff brings Dorothea, Yuletide Dancer, and Annette, Festive Helper, from Three Hopes War Phase. Both characters carry specific gifts for their classmates from their respective houses, and both being War Phase, they come from their respective roots. And I know it's not a huge difference, given how part 1 and 2 are 6 months apart, but Dorothea's level 40 conversation comment about having recently retired from the stage suggests to me that this is part 1 Dorothea to be as close to her retirement as possible. Interestingly, she's the only Dorothea without the dance ability despite her title, and the dancer class is only available in part 2, so that could be more evidence of her being from part 1. Shez Sharpest Blades is a female Shez in the Asura Master class. This class is only available when Master Seals become available in Chapter 10. Associated characters list Byleth as an enemy, so either Shez is from a route where Byleth is never recruited, or from before that branching point at the end of Chapter 10 or 12. Sharena also brings up those who slither in the dark as one of Shez's enemies, but they have very little presence in Golden Wildfire, making me think she's not from that route. Her grand hero battle is based on the Garag Mac battle map from Three Houses, which could suggest that she's from one of the battles for the Monastery in Hopes, those being the finales of Scarlet Blaze and Azure Gleam, and Chapter 14 of Golden Wildfire. Based on the lighting here, I'd say it's Scarlet Blaze or Golden Wildfire, since those take place at sunrise, while Azure Gleams takes place at night. So, hopefully it's not just me being biased towards the Black Eagles, but it really does seem like she's from the finale of Scarlet Blaze, where she's going to fight Talus' forces at Garag Mac. And for 2023, all we have so far is Byleth Fount of Learning, who confirms that he is a teacher at the Academy in Sage of Kadine. His level 40 conversation suggests he's been there for a while. He has his natural hair colour, meaning he hasn't merged with Sothis yet. And no, I don't know why his eyes are purple here. So, to put it all together in chronological order, pre-game, Sero Saint of Legend, The War of Heroes, Sothis Silver Spectre, sometime before the game, Geralt's Blade Breaker, Prologue with a female Byleth, White Clouds, Gatekeeper, Nothing to Report, Between Chapters 1 and 4, Byleth, Fount of Learning, Between Chapters 1 and 10, Bernadetta, Frosty Shutting, Felix, Icy Gift Giver, and Hilda, Holiday Layabout, Raphael, Musclemonger, Caspar, Summer Intensity, Ash, Fabled Sea Knight, Mercedes, Unfussed Basker, Hilda, Diz, Two Piece, and Leone, Relentless Rays, Ignat, Snowscape Artist, Lysithia, Gifted Students, and Manuela, Silver Caroler, Between Chapters 1 and 11. Dimitri Sky Blue Lion, between chapters 1 and 11 of Blue Lions. Byleth Tested Professor, between chapters 5 and 10. Ferdinand Noblest of Nobles, Lysithia Child Prodigy, Bernadetta Eternal Loner, and Annette Overachiever, possibly the same world. Death Knight the Reaper, chapter 6. Ingrid Galatea's Ur, Linhart Hevering's Ur, Dudu Dimitri's Vassal, and Marianne Adopted Daughter, between chapters 7 and 11. Sothis Bound Spirit Duo and Rhea Witch of Creation, between chapters 8 and 10. Dorothea Twilight Harmony, Byleth Fellstars Duo, Dorothea Solar Songstress, Sylvain Hanging with Tens, Ingrid Solstice Knight, and Lauren's Highborn Heat, between chapters 9 and 10. Seteth Seros Adherent, Flame Playing Innocent, Catherine Thunder Knight, and Shamir Archer Apart, between chapters 9 and 11 of either Blue Lions or Golden Deer. Solon Church Shadow, chapter 9 or 10. Cronia Gleaming Blade, Chapter 10. Flame Emperor Bringer of War, before Chapter 11 concludes. Edelgard Sun Empresses, between Chapters 11 and 12 of Black Eagles. Claude Tropical Trouble, Chapter 11 onwards of Golden Deer. Cindered Shadows, Yuri Ashen Valiant, Balthus King of Grappling, Constance Fallen Noble, Happy Drawn Out Sai, and Elfric Custodian Monk, Chapter 3. Byleth Proven Professor, Edelgard the Future, Dimitri the Protector, Claude the Schemer, Hubert Sinister Servant, Mercedes Kindly Devotee, Hilda Idol Maiden, Petra Princess of Bridget, and Sothis Girl on the Throne, Chapter 5 onwards. War Phase, Byleth Sublime Light, War Phase, Byleth the Fodland Star, Chapter 15 of Crimson Flower, or 14 of Another Root, Byleth the Fodland Light, Chapter 15 onwards. Crimson Flower, Edelgard Flame Emperor, after the war, but before the war with the Agarthans, with a male Byleth. Edelgard Adrestian Emperor, the same minus the Byleth thing. Azure Moon, Dimitri Savage Boar, between chapters 13 and 17. Edelgard Hegemon Husk, chapter 22. Dimitri King of Fargus, after the war. Dimitri Saviour King, the same but with a female Byleth. Verdant Wind, Marianne Serene Adherent, chapter 15 onwards. Nemesis King of Liberation, chapter 22. Claude, King of Unification, 
after the war, but before Claude leaves Fodlan to a male Byleth and returns to Almira. Claude, Almira's king, and Lysithia, Ernest Seeker, after Claude returns to Almira. Silver Snow, Shamir, Lone Moon Ninja, Chapter 16, Rhea, Immaculate One, Chapter 21, Three Hopes, Arvel, Cycle Keeper, Chapter 15, with Byleth Recruitment, Scarlet Blaze, Shares Rising Mercenary, Timeskip with a male Byleth, Dorothea Yuletide Dancer, between chapters 4 and 9. Monica Favoured Vassal, chapter 4 onwards with a male Shez. Shez Sharpest Blades, chapter 15, without Byleth. Azure Gleam, Shez Keen Mercenary, chapter 4 onwards. Annette's Festive Helper, chapter 4 onwards. Golden Wildfire, Hilda Helping Hand and Holst Hero of Leicester, War Phase with a female Shez. And that, finally, is all 84 Fodlan originating characters currently featured in Fire Emblem Heroes. If you think I got something wrong or noticed something I didn't, let me know and I'll update a pinned comment and take it into account for a future revisit of this topic. But what new alts are you hoping to see in the near future from the Fodlan games? Three Hopes alts are obvious, as well as normal War Phase variants, but I'm waiting for a child L&D duo unit with a dagger as their weapon. Maybe a younger Geralt with Child Byleth too. Summer Catherine and Shamir would be dope as well. And some proper what-ifs like Edelgard and Lysithia if they were never experimented on, Byleth and Shez as a teacher-student duo, War of Heroes Keyhole and Seth Lean, and my boy Aloise bringing puns to the masses. And like, maybe add all the characters who got sprites of their normal forms just for Gatekeeper's attack animation? All that work should amount to something. If you liked this video, why not subscribe and support me on Patreon like these fine people here? If not, then make sure to share it with your enemies so they can suffer along with you. Today's recommended video is Fallen Edelgard, What Were Faye Thinking by Fargast. It's a discussion of how heroes adapt Hegemon Edelgard, and the internet needs more discussion of Edelgard that isn't just opinionated takes on her politics. Or people accusing her of war crimes while unironically siding with Rhea.